thanks for joining us today. Well, just recently I had the privilege to marry my uh, daughter and her fiance, Derek, this past weekend, and to be able to participate in the whole wedding celebration. It was a joyful time. We had a lot of friends and family there, and it was just a real exciting time to see the two of them come together and find one another and to be able to be joined together both now and forever. And as I thought about that, you know, leading up to the wedding, there are a lot of plans and a lot of preparation that went into getting everything just right for that one moment, that moment in time, so it would be special for both of them as well as for all of those who would be attending. You know, in the scripture, the Bible talks about a wedding that is yet to come. In fact, a wedding feast. John, in the book of the Revelation, makes mention of this in chapter 19. He said in verse 6, And I heard, as it were, the voice of a great multitude, and like the voice of many waters, and like the voice of mighty peals of thunder, saying, Hallelujah, for the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to Him, for the marriage of the Lamb is come, and His wife has made herself ready. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white, for the fine linen is the righteousness of the saints. And he said to me, Right, blessed are they who are called to the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said to me, These are the true sayings of God. And I fell at his feet to worship, and he said to me, See thou do it not, I am thy fellow servant and of thy brethren that have the testimony of Jesus. Worship God, for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. There is a wedding that you and I don't want to miss. A wedding feast that we want to be a part of. We, as the body of Christ, are also the bride of Christ. A beautiful picture and a beautiful symbol of being joined to Him through His love for us and His choosing of us to be His bride. Ancient Jewish wedding customs gave us a beautiful description not only of how a man and woman were brought together, but also of how God in His plan of salvation and grace brings us to Himself to join us into a relationship with His Son. In those ancient customs, which John would have been familiar with, it was generally known that the father of the bridegroom would choose the bride for her son. Now many times, he would send an agent out in order to find a bride for his son, but this agent, this representative of the father, knew exactly what the father's desires were. We see this pictured also in the Old Testament in Abraham's servant as he sent him out to find a bride for his son, Isaac. Well, God the Father has chosen us to be a part of the bride of Christ. He has chosen us before the foundation of the world. And He has an agent that is sent out into the world to pick us. That is the Spirit of the living God. It is the Holy Spirit who brings about the work of transformation and salvation in our hearts and our lives. Once that bride is chosen, the Son is notified, and then the Son makes a trip from the Father's house to the house of the bride. While there, He enters into a contract with the father of the bride and the bride. He makes a covenant with them and he makes certain promises of what he is going to do for his bride. He also pays a price. He brings a dowry and he pays a price for his bride. And the sealing of that covenant is done by the drinking of a special cup of wine to seal the covenant. Well, I think you see the analogy there. Jesus left the Father's house, came to this world, and He made a new covenant. In this covenant, He made all kinds of promises of what He would do for us. All that He's going to do within us, all that He will do for us, taking care of us, providing for us, making us new creations, and guaranteeing our safe journey from this life into the next one by His grace and by His power. He paid a price. The Bible said that He paid the ransom price in the shedding of His own blood. He gave His own life that He might purchase us from sin and redeem us to Himself. He sealed that covenant by drinking a cup of wine. Jesus took that cup at the Last Supper and He said, This cup is the new covenant. It is sealed in my blood. Once the covenant was entered into, the price was agreed and paid, then the son and the young woman, they were, of course, betrothed to one another. They were engaged. And that was a commitment that was a binding commitment. It was very serious. But the bridegroom would then leave the bride's house for a period of at least 12 months. While he was gone, he would then begin work on the bridal chamber getting things ready. Jesus told His disciples that He was going to go away from them, and He said that He would return again and bring them to Himself. 
He is in heaven preparing a place for us, John 14. Now, this bridal chamber had to meet the specific approval of the father of the bridegroom. Now, once the bridal chamber was inspected, the father would give the son the nod, the word, go get your bride. If it met the approval of the father, then the father would say, now it's time to go get her. The bride, on the other hand, during this intermittent period, she was waiting. She didn't know when the bridegroom was going to return. So she was dressed in her garments. She had attendants who were with her, keeping her prepared, keeping her ready, keeping oil in their lamps at night, because generally the bridegroom would show, at a time, show up at a time when he wasn't expected, generally at night. And so she would be always living in this anticipation and preparation, and her attendants were helping her get ready. We are the bride who are waiting for the bridegroom to return. We're in that intermittent period right now. There's coming a time, maybe very soon, when the father will say to the son, go get your bride. And we are not only the bride, but we are attendants to the bride. We are to be encouraging one another. We are to be helping one another prepare ourselves, prepare our wedding garments, getting ready, walking in love with Jesus Christ and in service to others. Then, when the Father gave the word to the Son, He left and He went after His bride. And He was attended by a great procession. And they would come to the bride's house with the sound of a shofar and with shouting. And the bridegroom would come on a horse and sweep His bride away. And He would take her back to that bridal chamber where they would celebrate for seven days within that bridal chamber. And they would consummate their marriage. Well, I think you see it again, the comparison there. Jesus is going to return with a great company, with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and the trump of God. This will be an announcement that everyone will hear and he will swoop us up and catch us up into his presence. And so Paul says we will meet the Lord in the air and so shall we ever be with the Lord. We will enter into that eternal celebration and joyful consummation where we are one in every way with the Lord Jesus Christ because of his grace. I encourage you two things. One, have yourself a relationship with Christ. Make sure you're a part of that bride. Two, live in preparation mode. Be getting yourself ready. Be living in anticipation and an expectation of the return of our bridegroom, the Lord Jesus Christ. And in the words of the apostles, Maranatha. God bless you.